southern shore of the Blatten Zee in Hungary is well known for marshes and for mud, and in summer it is peculiar for the heat and for the mosquitoes. The low-lying land around the lake makes good pasture for the long-horned cattle of the Hungarian country folk. And every morning, a man sounds a veli on a bugle, which you may see in his hand. And at his call, from the village styles, droves of pigs are gathered together and taken to feed by the lakeside. But the southern edge of the lake is nearly all marshland, and the Hungarian government has made the wilderness of reeds and rushes into a bird sanctuary. Here live the great white herons. Their white feathers, known as ospreys, have caused these birds to be hunted until only three pairs are left in Hungary. Nearby lives a family of storks. Among the reeds are a large colony of black glossy ibis, and at the edge of the clearing stand the spoon bills, full of dignity. Because many birds live in the marsh, it is a paradise for naturalists, but it is a paradise in no other way. Even as early in the year as May, you have to start off at five in the morning if you would avoid the extreme heat of the day. It is a slow journey along channels choked by water chestnuts to the place where the spoonbills live. At length, it becomes too difficult to push the boat any further, and the only thing to do is to get out and plunge through the marsh. Putties are useful, even if they are hot, for the mud is full of leeches, and it would be fatal to put down your hand to keep your balance. A multitude of hungry leeches would immediately fasten onto your fingers. When the reeds get a little less thick, the first thing to do is to find a place where a hide can be erected to conceal the camera. And beating down the reeds is really warm work with a temperature at over a hundred in the shade. When the hide is completed, the camera has to be taken round the back way, and by now it is really being very hot indeed. The hide commands a good view of a clearing in the swamp with a spoonbill's nest looking like a clump of hay in the foreground, and one of the spoonbills at the edge of the rushes. The trouble is that the spoonbills are not the only birds to use the clearings as a nursery. They share it with a large number of glossy ibis, who, scrambling and squalling, often drive the spoonbills away. The ibis build their nests all over the ground, so near together that no parents can recognize their own children, and the young birds 
are fed by any grown-up ibis that comes along. Naturally, the baby that shouts loudest gets the most food. The one in the middle of the picture is doing well, and the uproar is often more than other birds can put up with. The only thing that hushes the ibis colony is their fear of a marsh harrier. When the shadow of this fierce hawk falls upon the ground, the ibis quickly take refuge in flight. And even the spoonbills plunge further into the marsh. Here they wade about all day, sheltered from the noonday sun by the undergrowth and getting rather dirty from poking about in the mud. Spoonbills are nervous birds, for they have no weapon of defense. However, each has a spoon in its mouth in the shape of a queer bill which is adapted for scooping up water creatures and tiny fish. They have long legs for wading through the swamp and feet that are half webbed so that they do not slip up on the mud. Once they nested in England, but the English fens are no longer lonely enough to suit the spoonbills, who prefer the solitary margin of the Blarton Zee for their nursery. In May, each untidy nest holds two or more eggs, which hatch out at the end of the month. As soon as they can, the young birds leave the nest and take refuge from the burning sun among the reeds. Sometimes one may be seen floundering along at the edge of the clearing, or carefully attending to its toilet. The old birds are kept busy flying backwards and forwards with nourishment for the family. The parent gathers up spoonfuls of food, which it partially digests. It then returns to the nest, brings up the food, as this one in the center is doing, and lays it before the young ones. Another baby actually places its beak in the parents and gets the food direct. Little spoonbills make a great fuss about being fed, fluttering their wings and bowing their heads in a very funny manner. Indeed, they look like a group of mechanical toys. The feeding is a non-stop affair going on until night begins to fall. Now the crested herons, who have panted in the heat all day, wander off into the marsh. The ibis take their evening flight among the trees. and the stork comes home to the nest. The worn-out naturalist returns along the weed-carpeted channel. And now, happy in the solitude, the spoonbills stand on the edge of the marshes, monarchs of all they survey.